they rowed the boat across to the other side of the lake because that's where Jesus wanted to go. They didn't question it, but I'm pretty sure they weren't happy about it either because where they were going was nothing like where they were. They were home and it was safe and pleasant in Galilee, but the place they were going might as well have been marked with a skull and crossbones on their map because it was such a dark spiritual place. And sure enough, as soon as they get there, as soon as they put a foot onto the shore, this crazy man comes running pell-mell towards them right out from the local cemetery, yelling at the top of his voice, Jesus' name, and not wearing a stitch of clothes either. I know, let's just keep rowing, you know. No, no. And he throws himself down at the feet of Jesus. And he's begging not to be thrown into the demon's abyss. Now, demon possession makes a really good horror movie today. But it's not something that is really part of our normal experience. I don't think anyone here has probably seen anyone like this. And and it's kind of uh, really bizarre to think of somebody just roiling inside with this rioting mass of demons that have named themselves Legion, for we are many. You know, it's like, whoa. It's even scary just to kind of talk about and think too long that that really happened. You know, and, and, and how did that happen? How did this man find himself so completely filled with thousands of demons? Well, interestingly enough, the reading from Isaiah 65 sheds some pretty bright light and gives us some very good clues as to what was going on with this man. In Isaiah 65, in that reading, God is complaining that his own people have been, they've been just like the pagans who lived in the area with them and that they had adopted their occult practices of calling out to the demons for help. And in that passage, God said, All day long I have held out my hands to uh, an obstinate people who walk in ways not good, who pursue their own imaginations, a people who continually provoke me to my face, uh, offering sacrifices um, in gardens and sacrifices to demons, and there burning incense on brick altars. Uh, They sit in the graves and spend their uh, nights keeping secret vigil, who eat the flesh of pigs and who have broth of unpure, unclean meat. God is describing what is also described in historical documents of pagan occult practices. It was a thing back then where you would use pigs and pig blood to call out in a ritual way to demons. To go to the tombs and sit there making a little altar out of bricks and and offering up incense, calling out to the spirits of the dead to now help the living. And and while these pagan practices are quite bizarre and, and foreign to the way we do things, what they hoped to accomplish and the reasons for doing them are not foreign at all, but quite familiar. They had hoped in this process to take control in the world that is just completely out of control and there increase their likelihood of financial gain to increase the yields at harvest time for the protection against enemies, the general success in life, and luck with the ladies. I know, that's what they were doing, and, and yet and it worked. Not all the time, not perfectly, but kind of like playing the lottery, there was just enough payout to keep them interested and at it. And 
Of course, there was also some collateral damage, even like gambling today. Um, and that the, uh, once you have summoned a demon and are in its presence, why, there's just no telling what could happen. And this poor man, kind of like a, a heroin addict at the very bottom, had been hoping to use all of these demons in such a way to benefit and to bless his life and to take control, but now he was enslaved by all of this. He was beyond really any human help as he lived out in the tombs now. Not even a chain could contain him. He would be lost forever unless delivered from sin and death and this everlasting condemnation. The very abyss created for these demons, he too would very well be thrown into it. But the Father of all mercy sent His Son, Jesus, who sails into these dark waters, who sets foot into this region for this man. See, Jesus is in control. He is, by His very authority of His person, able to speak and to command these demons that were not able to be contained by chains or guards or by any of the human beings around. Jesus simply commands them to leave, and they do. See, He's in charge of all that is out of control in our world. And he, he's never at a loss of, well, I don't know if I can help in this situation. And once he arrives in this man's presence, rescue is available. And as he comes, and as he casts the demons out, this man is finally set in his right mind, and he's sat then at the feet of Jesus, and he's, he's clothed with garments of the Savior. And his heart wants nothing else but simply to be with Jesus. Wherever you're going, I will go. Your people will be my people. I, I'm yours completely and utterly. See, that's one of the telltale signs, one of many, to know that salvation has truly come to you where you just want to be with Jesus. You will not be satisfied unless you can be with Him all the time. Unfortunately, nobody else in the region felt the same way as this man. As they observed all that was going on and that their thousands of head of hogs are now dead and oh, this crazy man is now back in his right mind and, and this stranger seemed to be, have something to do with it all. Rather than faith, they had a response of fear. And, and they had a big, pretty big beef with Jesus, not so much financial. I mean, it costs a lot to replace all those pigs, but the real problem they had was that this, these hogs were the very means that they were using to employ their occult practices to control the world for success and security, and now they're all gone. And as they look at Jesus... And they realized well, he did this all simply by saying and speaking a word. Why well, then there's just no telling what kind of other powers and damage that he might do to their life. And so they just kind of step back. And, and, and they say to him, Jesus, just leave us. Leave us to life as we have known it and trust it. You know, when you think about missed opportunities in life, it's like this was a big one. Everything they'd been trying so hard to do with the pigs and the demons, without all the collateral damage, was available to them. They could have brought all of their sick, all of their blind, all of their other demon-possessed people to Jesus, and He would have healed them all, right? They could have sat with that man at the feet of Jesus, and they too could have had a heart of faith in which... They know that, Jesus, you're in charge. You're in control of everything. And they could have been completely convinced that nothing in all creation would be able to separate them from the love of God. Neither life nor death, neither angels nor demons, height or depth nor anything else in all creation. Their hearts could have had that kind of faith. But sadly, they, they missed out. And... So does everyone who just wants to stay with the pigs. 
who wants life just to continue on as it always has. And I'll just keep trying different things to manipulate this world and, and, and use this and use that to get what I want. You see, the difference between Jesus and the demons, the demons possessed the man and controlled him, but when Jesus is asked to leave, he leaves. That's what love does. It never forces its way into the heart but it is welcomed first. But for everyone who's living with the demons inside, for everyone who knows we have no power or control in this world, and my life is now really unmanageable because of what I've been trying to do it to bring it under control, to everyone who's living with the collateral damage of actually being enslaved, even driven from their home of peace and joy, take heart because Jesus is here. And He has come set and set sail into these dark spiritual waters. He sets foot where we live, really live. And as He finds us, He is not concerned that our hearts are just too messed up for Him to really do any good. But as you sit here at the feet of Jesus and His Word, and relatively in your right mind, hear Him speak to your addictions, to your compulsive behaviors, to the guilt and the shame that you feel, Hear Him say to you, You are no longer a slave, but you are a dear child. These are more than just words, but words from the one who has full authority from the Father, the one who is the Son of the Most High God, the one who can truly speak to the demons inside of us and say that your sins are forgiven. For most of us have gone willingly in to explore how we can make our life a little better and have wandered completely into very dark territory and now Jesus offers forgiveness and a way out and a way back in which we now are dear children of the Father and saved from the abyss. For He has gone into the abyss Himself in His death on the cross. And by His resurrection from the dead, He provides then a way out which is with Him. Because in this world, it will continue to be out of control until He comes again. But He is. And before He comes, and in this chaos of a world, there will be a, a, a constant parade of people who are going to be offering ever new ways to harness the powers, be they secular or spiritual, so that you can have a better life and better finances and more security and, and to deal with the fears of this world. But your hearts, your soul, your... you know that it is Jesus and Him alone that you want to be with. And better than the poor guy who was there on the, the, the place of Gennesaret who had to just go back to his home and tell all that Jesus has done, you get to be with Him. You get to continually be in the presence of God. And now, how do you put this, this reality and, and this truth into really... <laughs> practical use in this week to come. Well, when you wake up in the morning, seek Him. Call on the name of Jesus. Let that be your first thought. And then, uh, set your mind on Him. And that you are continually thinking about Jesus being right there with you through your entire day. Hide His Word in your heart. And that you memorize different passages and hold them dear. And then uh, talk with Him as your constant companion. And rely on Him as you face your demons.
Because the repeated habits that are ingrained in you will just be there to take you right back to where you've been without missing a beat. But you're no longer alone. In your normal, everyday habits of just doing life, Jesus is now here to give you a new life. A life in which you live in His love and forgiveness. So as last week, the vicar invited you to say out loud, I am forgiven. Add to that, I am a child of God. I am forgiven. I am a child of God. Seek and set your heart and live with Him. He will never leave you. To Him alone then be all glory and honor and praise. Amen.